guys and welcome to another video. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a simple as muck float rig, uh, basically aimed at more beginners and novices that are just kind of getting into the sport and looking to do a bit of, uh, bit of float fishing. So first things first, obviously you need a float rod, waggler rod, you can even get away with using a feeder rod if you've got one to start off with. Um, you need a nice little, little float reel or a match reel, um, this one's a 2500 size, absolutely perfect. Um, I'm assuming you all know how to uh, thread your, your rod rings, uh, or thread the line through the rod rings, and uh, we'll go from there and I'll show you exactly how to set this up. First things first, what you want to be doing is selecting a float, and uh, in this case, we're just using a simple waggle float. This one is uh, one of my go-tos for most types of float fishing, or most scenarios, and it's just an insert waggler. Uh, it's rated for two and a half AA shots. So yeah, when you've selected a float, what you do is you thread that other line first. Now, when you're doing this, it's better to be under depth than it is over depth. Uh, and we'll find out why in a bit when we go to find the depth of the water we're fishing. Once you've threaded your float up the line, you need to apply some shots. Uh, even though it says it takes two and a half AAs, I'm good to uh, weight it up with a smaller shot, which is a BB. So the BB shots weigh less than an AA, believe it or not. And it'll take about four to sink it, but I'm gonna put two on, and then we're gonna see how it sits in the water with just the two shots on there. So when you're applying the shots, I put one on there already, which is the bottom shot. I always start with the bottom shots and it locks it and stops it falling off of the line, is they have a little, little slot in the side, in the middle of them. In fact, that one's a bit squashed. They have a little slot. So you slot the line in that slot. Simple as, you don't want to do it too tight and you don't want, to, don't want it too plush to the float either. You just want a tiny little bit of space in there so it can move a little bit. And then you just give it a little pinch. You don't want to do it too hard because then you can damage your line. Right, so we're at the point now where I've locked my float on the line with two shots. So I'm going to just drop that into the water now and see how the float sits on the surface. That way we can depend on whether we need more weight on it or take some off because it might sink. We don't know. I'm going to flick that out like this. And I can see that float is laying flat on the surface. So, since I've seen that, which is laying on the top and not stood up at all, I know I need to put some more shots on there. But because it's laid completely flat, I'm just going to double up my BBs on the top. So I'm going to pinch two further BBs to the line where the first two went, just next to them. So that's one. And this is two. So with this float, I now have four BBs on the top. So we're going to do the same again and see how it sits. Uh, over time, when you keep doing this, you'll eventually figure out how many shots and how much weight it takes to, to cock a float up properly. So, drop that in. And that's now stood up. So we're, we're getting somewhere. We're nearly there. So now we've found how much weight it takes to cock the float, we want to dot the float down a lot more than it is. So, forget about the BBs now, because we're just about, just about, cocked it is uh, I'm going to add a little bit more depth to it because I've made this incredibly shallow I'm going to take some smaller shots and in this case these are number sixes and these ones are very small um, I'm not even going to try and show them on the camera they're just basically the same as the BBs just a fraction of the size I'm going to try and not drop these everywhere and what I'm going to do is just add a couple of these small shots on there um, so I'm putting one near the top, pinch it on, exactly the same as your locking shots, just on the line. But I'm going to do these in, uh, in, in what we call bulks, I'm going to do it in bulks of two. So I'm going to put two, sort of like, maybe eight inches from the hook, eh, from the float, sorry. And then I'm going to do the same with another set of two. 
and hopefully this will uh, give us the depth, uh, give us the, the weight we need to set this float properly. So, another one there. And another one here. So I have two sets of bulk shots on here now. So we're going to do the same again and just drop it in and see how the float sits. Just that in there, just give it a little second so all the, the weight catches up with the line and the float. And we're almost there. We want just the orange bit just to show in out the top of the water. So in this case, I'm going to uh, take two of these shots off and I'm going to use a different size of shot and that's going to be a number four, which is a bit bigger than number six. But it weighs a little bit more. So, after I've taken these off, we'll put a number four on there. So, I've got my number fours here, different brand. They all do the same job. There's absolutely nothing different about them to the other ones we put on. And it doesn't matter if you mix them up. So, I'm going to get two number fours here. And then I'm going to put these with the, uh, the locking shots up at the float. Just because they're a bit bigger. We don't want these, these shots in front of the fish. So you might just put them off from biting. So like we did before, we pinch the shots on. But we're going to put them up near the top of the float. Like so. Just a light squeeze because we don't want to damage the line, do we? Like that. I'm going to leave my little bulk of shots there. And then we're going to drop it back in. I can instantly see that is spot on. You don't have to do it in that exact same order that I just did. You can start with your BBs and the number fours. But I'm just doing this as a probability scenario for if you were setting your rig up. So, I'll show you what I looks like in the water. And then we'll move on to hook lengths and plumbing the depth to find out how deep the water is. So ideally with a uh, float rig you want to use what's called a hook length which is uh, it's a piece of line with the hook attached onto that is lighter or weaker than your main line. So in this case I'm going to tie my own up but you can buy them pre-tied hook to nylon so that's what you say when you go to the shop could I get a hook to nylon size 16 14 whatever size up you need and uh, they should be able to provide it with you but to attach it to the line all we need to do is just tie what's called a loop knot so you make a simple loop just like that I'll show you a close-up in a minute I can tie one on first and what you do is, is you straighten it out and then fold it back over like so. Oops. Line's a bit curly. You just pinch it where you, where you curl it over. And then pass the original loop through the two loops that you just made by pinching it together. And you want to wet, wet your knots. And pull it together like that. And it leaves you with a little loop on the line. You can almost see it. There. Yeah, we got a loop and that's how we attach nice and strong how we attach our hook length material to the main line right then so now you've figured out how to tie a loop knot and you've got your hook to nylons i'd recommend you buy hook to nylons to start off with uh, but if you figure out how to do that it's just a matter of getting a piece of line tying it up to the end and then i'm going to do this and show you you get your hook to nylons all my, um, well, basically we're on a canal today, so my, uh, all my, well, the majority of my canal fishing is on four pound main line and a two pound hook length. So what we do, we take our loop that we tied in the end of the main, oops, the main <laughs> end of the main line. This has gone flying. <laughs> oh, we got it back. Is we take our hook length and. We take the hook end and pass the hook through that loop. So it's like this. You can see the main line there against my coat. 
and the, the hook length is just going through it. So you get the, the loop with the hook length and you pass your hook through that one. And then what you'll notice is the knot tightens up onto it just like that and your hook is now attached to your main line. Absolutely spot on that. So I'm just going to tidy my taggings up and then I'll show you how to find the depth of the water you're fishing. Right so now I've got a hook tied on, my float is attached, it's all weighted up perfectly. I've separated my bulk of number sixes so I've slid one up towards the float and that's a, a fair distance away, it doesn't need to be right up close to it. And then the other one is just on, on the loop nut. Well, just on top of the, the, the loops where my hook lamp is attached. So it just gives it a more even uh, sink in the water as you cast out. It allows the bait just to slowly move down and like it like flops down like this, as opposed to just straight to the bottom. It gives a chance to any fish that are up in the water a chance to see it. So to find the depth, we use what's called a plummet. This one's covered in rubbish it's been in my bag for ages so that's what this thing is this little contraption is there that's called a depth plummet and uh, this is going to help us in finding how deep our water is so what I'm going to do is with the plummet as you can see here it has a little loop in the top so I'm going to get my line where I've put it. I'm going to uh, pass the hook through that little eye in the top like so. So it's like that on the line. The bottom of it is either going to be cork or foam. Then what you do is you just tuck your hook into the foam like so if it'll focus. Now the idea with this is the plummet is heavier than your float is, so it's heavier than the float can handle. So the idea is you drop it into the swim where you're fishing, whatever range it is, and uh, it should either drag the float under or the float will slowly become visible in the water. So what we're going to do is we're going to plop this in now and we're going to see if we're fishing deep enough for where we want to be fishing. Let's do it. I'm all set. I've got my rig just dangling around next to me here with the plummet on the end um, so it's time to find out how deep my fishing spot is now typically with the canal it slopes down into the middle on each side so it's like a big V and you have a flat deeper run along the middle um, you typically find a lot of the bigger fish will just be following either the inside slope or the outside slope uh, and in this case I, I generally fish the middle middle channel so uh, I'm going to flick this out there and it's going to tell us how deep that water is. Now I know for a fact this float is just going to get dragged under because it's, it's a lot deeper than it is I've, that I've got my float set. So I'm going to chuck that out there and I'm going to see what happens. Right, so the float is buried but I can just see it under the surface. So I'm going to need to add a little bit of depth onto there. So. Whoa. The idea with the shots and just pinching them on, not only does it protect your line, you can also just easily slide them. So we're just going to add a bit more depth to this by sliding the shots up that we, we lock the float on with, like so. And then what we'll do is we'll do the same again and see if the float floats or sinks. see the float just under the surface there it's slowly pulling towards the weight of that plummet and coming up to the surface just about there. see now that float is just about tipping the surface um, I know we're roughly about a dead depth because with a canal there's always a bit of flow in the water so the float is just being pulled to the side slightly um, so if I give you a load of slack the opposite side, it'll come up a little bit and you see the little point show at the top. 
Um, but ideally you want to be a little bit over depth, especially for canal fishing because of that tow. In the current you can have boats coming through, the depth changes quite a lot all the time. So um, I normally fish it maybe three to eight inches over depth at a time, depending on how much that float drags with the current. So I'm going to wind them back in. Well, since I know I'm dead depth, you just need to eyeball it until you get to about maybe four inch. Uh, for lakes and things, you can probably get away with fishing bang on dead depth. Um, and you can also get away with fishing maybe three to four inches over. Uh, I wouldn't go much further than that. Um, especially if you're fishing for the carp or, or tench or bream or something like that. So, now I know. I am about four inches over depth and this should be absolutely spot on for the float. Right so, that float is stood up perfectly, just the tip showing in the water now. And that's our rig done. Over time it. Now we've sussed the depth of the swim, it's just a matter of fishing. And uh, you just need to constantly keep readjusting your rig. Uh, every now and again if bites slow down or you're not getting any bites whether that's coming up in the water or even going a little bit more over depth because your float might be dragging too much there's lots of things to take into account when on a canal at least if you was on a pond there's no drift or anything uh, you might you might get a little bit of surface tow if the wind picks up uh, but other than that you're absolutely fine so uh, as long as you're fishing slightly over depth you'll always be well pretty much always be in one position and your bait's always going to be stuck, it sat on the bottom uh, where you originally dropped it in. So we're all set up now, I've plumbed the depth, I know where I'm fishing and how deep I'm fishing, it's just a matter of catching a fish. So we're going to do that now, well we're going to try to. Another little tip. Another tip is when you've cast out, you want to cast just past your swim and uh, wind down to it, the tip under the water. The idea with the tip under the water is so you can sink your line as it's coming in. You can also give it a little flick like this and that'll sink the remainder of the line that's on the surface. Now it's just a matter of catching a fish and that can be anywhere between two seconds and ten hours. There it is, nice big stinky fish taking on the, uh, the simple float rig. And it's a cracking little two toner as that. Look that, so we're quite happy with that. You see that, how it's like two different colours. I don't know if that's like a seasonal thing or something to do with spawning or, or what, I don't know. But it's absolutely beautiful, he wants to go back so bad. <laughs> He's playing up, stinks at all. Back. I like preems. 